Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 197, Aristocratic Families Consort Jing was used to tyrannize in the palace, even though she was arrogant and brainless, no one would dare to touch her that even Empress Xianda would not be bothered to care about her. One did not expect that she would have a bone with Shen Miao, or to say that she have a bone with Prince Ruai. No matter how clever and eloquent Shen Miao was, Consort Jing had the ability to punish her with a crime and it was alright to just find any charge. However she could not afford to offend Prince Ruai. When Prince Ruai just came to Long Yi, the officials in court had all opposed to it and would hinder him openly or discreetly. Everyone saw his stubborn and lazy appearance and thought that he was just a devil incarnate. No one knew that this person only used two years to make those officials avoid him, like a mouse seeing a cat, that they did not dare to provoke at all. Consort Jing's father also warned her not to be an enemy of Prince Ruai. No matter how willful Consort Jing was, she dared not confront Prince Ruai. Emperor Yang Le had no way to deal with Prince Ruai, much less a consort like her. She smiled reluctantly, Your Highness Prince Ruai is so busy, how would there be time to listen to fourth younger sister's music? She then turned to Emperor Yang Le for help, in the future. Chen Qi will teach and guide fourth younger sister so your highness Prince Ru I must not be bothered with it. This prince do not have the time to be bothered with it. Zi Jing Xing smiled and held Shen Miao's shoulder, Wang Fa also do not have the energy. When consort Jing is free, it is better to think of ways to share imperial older brother's worries. Consort Jing bit her lips and looked at Emperor Yong Le awkwardly. Emperor Yong Le's face became heavier, no matter what. It made him unhappy that Zi Jing Xing kept on humiliating his consort. Perhaps previously he did not mind but now he did not wish Zi Jing Xing to stand up for Shen Miao. What kind of appearance of doting was this becoming to? He coldly asked Shen Miao. Ruai Wang, is this what you mean? Shen Miao bowed docilely. The wife follows the husband. Empress Xianda looked at Shen Miao somewhat surprised. It seemed that she did not think that Shen Miao would be so stubborn in front of Emperor Yongle and suddenly thought of something and smiled as she shook her head. When Emperor Yongle heard it, he stared silently at Shen Miao for a long time. His gaze could be described as somewhat fierce but Shen Miao's head was bowed. One did not know if it was playing dumb or one did not see it and always kept a gentle look and turn a blind eye to this gaze. Zi Jing Xing pulled Shen Miao up and said, If Imperial older brother have nothing else to say then Chen Di will leave first. He continued, As newlyweds, us, husband and wife, have a lot of things to do. Shen Miao, Emperor Yang Le said, remember what Zen had said to you. Zi Jing Xing said with a smile but not a smile, or it was just that or word did not sound like one had placed Emperor Yang Le's words to heart. After Shen Miao and Zi Jing Xing left, Emperor Yang Le seemed to be extremely unhappy and with a brush of his sleeves, he did not bother with Empress Xianda and Consort Jing and left on his own. When Empress Xianda and Consort Jing saw it, they knew that Emperor Yang Le was furious and did not follow him. Consort Jing looked at Empress Xianda and said, Older sister and Ruai Wangf's relationship is rather good and kept on speaking for her just now. If one do not know about it, one would think that both of you had already known one another. Ruai Wangf is educated, rational, intelligent and wise. Naturally she is lovable. Empress Xian did gently smiled. Older sister don't forget, she is a Ming Chi's people. Consort Jing said harshly, for Ming Chi's people who come over to Great Liang, who would know what schemes she has in her heart. Since older sister want to help her then don't drag oneself into the water. When his majesty start to blame, even older sister would also be blamed. Since one is married to Great Liang, then one is Great Liang's people. Could it be that Consort Jing is also going to be suspicious of the residence of Prince Ruai? Prince Ruai and Ruai Wang far husband and wife and are of one. Speaking of eloquence, how could Consort Jing be the Empress's opponent? Consort Jing smiled coldly, older sister as usual speak fluently and has great trust is placed on Ruai Wang. It seems that one is firm in standing on the side of Ruai Wang. Empress Xianda did not say anything, but what to do? 
Consort Jing suddenly smiled, older sister is able to help her for this moment but will not be able to help her for a lifetime. There will not be only one female in the residence of Prince Rui. Even if there is no opportunity for my fourth younger sister, there would be someone else who will have a chance. As she looked at Empress Xianda's face, Consort Jing continued, looking at His Majesty, he really do not like that Rui Wang. Empress Xianda said, the matter of the residence of Prince Rui is not something that you and me can intervene. Prince Rui of first rank have his own mind. Younger sister also do not dare to volunteer. Consort Jing said with a smile, one only wanted to advise a word with older sister. Older sister is not Buddha, even if one had a kind heart and helps everyone, one have to see if one have the ability to do so. Older sister's today is Rui Wang's tomorrow. After finishing, she then put on the air as she said previously and walked away proudly with the maids. The gentle smile on Empress Zyanda gradually sank and a glimmer of grief appeared in her eyes. In the carriage, Shen Miao asked, What did the emperor said to you? Some trivial matters of court. Zi Jing Xing said. Shen Miao knew that if it were truly trivial matters then Emperor Yang Le would not have specifically called Zi Jing Xing over to talk. She need not require thinking to know that it must be related to her. Emperor Yang Le's attitude was clearly seen that he did not like Shen Miao and did not like that Zi Jing Xing valued Shen Miao greatly. Perhaps it was because of Shen Miao's identity that was too sensitive or perhaps Emperor Yang Le had a better choice. Seeing Shen Miao Ao not speaking, Zi Jing Xing turned his head over and pinched her face, but today you made me take a second look. One seemed to have not seen such a ferocious appearance like this for a long time. Ferocious, Shen Miao retorted. Otherwise what? Zi Jing Xing sighed and seemed to be recalling. At the beginning in Ming Chi, when one saw you in Wo Long Temple, I had thought that the young lady of the Shen family is truly ferocious and one do not know which family's young master would have the bad luck in the future and marry this tigress back. Shen Miao looked at him calmly, do you want to quarrel? Zi Jing Xing's lips were raised and he said, this is then right. This is then someone from my Zi family. Shen Miao was being teased by him like this and all the dissatisfaction of Zi Jing Xing concealing Emperor Yang Le's works were all dispersed like clouds. It is fine that you do not tell me what the conversation between the Emperor and you was but who is Consort Jing? The Emperor seemed to be favor her a lot, it just that. She pondered on the words to use, from my perspective. It is nothing special. Zi Jing Xing almost laughed out. Previous consort Jing said that Shen Miao did not look anything special and now she used the exact phase back. She was spiteful. He said, Consort Jing is the eldest daughter of General Lu. General Lu, just take it as he is the equivalent to the position of your Shen family in Ming Chi. Shen Miao's eyes rose. So it is a family with military power. No wonder Emperor Yang Le was particularly tolerant of her. Great Liang is different from Ming Chi. There are very few military commanders in Ming Chi, thus, the Shen and Zi family could hold half of the country. Great Liang's military and civil positions are equal and there is has no deliberate biases. Thus there are many military commanders and it is difficult to centralize it. General Lu was one of those that have a number of soldiers under him and because of this, he is somewhat arrogant. When Zi Jing Xing spoke till there, there was a hit of coldness that flashed in his eyes. Seeing what kind of attitude consort Jing have in the inner palace, one would know what kind of attitude the Lu family have in Long Yi. Shen Miao said, what the woman in the inner palace represent, was not often just a female as they still had the backing of the family clan's reputation and power. When the family clan was powerful then the more fearless one was. It was most likely not possible to just base on favor. Just like the her in the previous lifetime, if there was not the Shen family behind her, one feared that Fu Zayu Yi would not even give her a look. Fu Chen, who was born from Mai Furen was able to threaten the crown prince, other than because my Furan has exceptional means, it was because of that brilliant and intelligent brother that earned his own merits. Thinking of my Furan, Shen Miao was suddenly stunned. In the previous life, 
Mai Furan appeared years after Fu Ziyi ascended to the throne and when she headed to Qin country. This lifetime one did not know if Fu Ziyi was able to ascend but Shen Miao had already reached Great Liang, so will Mai Furan still appear? Zi Jingxing did not notice Shen Miao's distraction and praised, not bad. Consort Jing is arrogant. The Lu family is impudent and imperial older brother have the intention to suppress but one have to slowly carry out the scheme. Can't there be checks and balances? Xin Miao asked. Zi Jingxing shook his head, the Lu family is the late emperor's people. Imperial older brother has already cleaned up the rest of the people that the late emperor left behind, other than the two families the military Lu family and the civil Yi family. The Lu and Yi family's roots were deep and complicated as they have many followers so if one pull the roots up, one fear that it would only hurt the imperial family. Imperial older brother cannot be impatient and they knew of this and thus dared to behave without fear. Xin Miao frowned. Zi Jingxing and Emperor Yang Le were brothers and the late emperor was their birth father. Why did Zi Jingxing call him late emperor and not imperial father? Moreover like what Zi Jingxing said, the Lu and Yi families were the late emperor's people and even though there would be different officials during different monarch rule, Emperor Yongle was the rightfully succeeded the imperial position and these old officials of two dynasties should do their best to work for him. Why does it seem that the Lu and Yi families have rebellious intentions and Emperor Yongle had the heart to suppress their ambitions? Could it be that the late emperor was not willing to see Emperor Yongle governing the country? Or was it the Lu and Yi families had disloyal hearts after the late emperor passed on? Xin Miao sensed that she had discovered some secret matters. Suddenly she felt it was somewhat ridiculous. In Mingqi, the Shen and Zi families did one's duty and was sincere but the imperial family was mistrustful that even if there were no daughters of the Shen and Zi families in the palace, the imperial family still tried to suppress them. In Great Liang, the entire thing was reversed. The treacherous officials were arrogant but the imperial family could only accept a compromise and slowly scheme. Which family does the empress belong to? Xin Miao asked, the K family. Zi Jingxing said, the K family is a family of historians. Xin Miao was startled, historians have little power and have no real power. For the emperor to be willing to marry a young lady of a historian's family and establish as an empress, it is enough to show that the emperor loves the empress. Zi Jingxing did not speak, but she then said, since the Empress is in one's heart then why would one let Consort Jing be disrespectful to the Empress? For Consort Jing to dare to be disrespectful to the Empress, it would be obviously been influenced by the Emperor. If Emperor Yongle loved the Empress, because of the favor towards the Empress, no matter how arrogant Consort Jing is, she would not dare to be disrespectful. But Consort Jing dared to be this rude and argue with the Empress. She obviously knew that Emperor Yongle would not blame her for it. Since one was not marrying her for power then why did one unable to do the simplest of protecting her? Zi Jingxing smiled blandly, Imperial older brother is different from me. He then patted her head again, Imperial Sao is different from you too. Shen Mia waved his hands away. So the fourth young lady of the Lu family admires you? Zi Jingxing was stunned and smiled immediately. Why are you still jealous? But there is still one strange thing. Xin Miao said to herself, if the Lu family wanted to dominate the courts or have their ambitions revealed, they had already sent a daughter into the palace so the goal is accomplished. So why would they send over another young lady? Moreover, Xin Miao looked at him, even if it is given, why is she sent to you? You are only Prince Ruai of first rank and not the Emperor. It cannot be that the Lu family daughters want to control your imperial family brothers in the palm of their hands. She looked up and paused. Zi Jingxing was looking at her deeply and she was unable to understand the meaning of that gaze. Before she could ask, Zi Jingxing Han pulled her in front and hugged her waist with both hands before burying his head onto Shen Miao's shoulder to half hug her. He said lowly and a grumbling laugher was heard by her ears. If one goes on like this, I would not have any secrets in front of you. Secrets? Shen Miao's heart moved. Did she said something right? You still have secrets from me? She deliberately asked. Don't you also have secrets from me? 
Zi Jing Xing said, she paused, Zi Jing Xing loosened his hands and stared at her eyes with the corners of his lips hooked up but his eyes were firmly locked onto her and made her somewhat breathless. He said, how about exchanging my secrets for your secrets? Xin Miao's heart violently trembled but she reacted very quickly and turned her head over. I then do not want to know your secrets. Zi Jing Xing gave a no before laughing. Anyways you have the ability to investigate it correct? Shen Miao turned her head back and did not speak while looking at him. Zi Jing Xing said lazily, you have the ability to investigate my secrets. For your secrets, do you think I would know or not? In a sudden moment, Shen Miao was in a somewhat confused state. The secret she had was the secret of her past life. But she had no courage to tell it to anyone that even to Shen Kaiyu, Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan. She remained silent over it and dare not reveal a single trace of it. Not to mention when one spoke of such strange matter, would one consider her as crazy? One feared that no one would believe her when she said it and was even more afraid that others would look at her differently. Too stupid, too weak, killed her own children and family. Would they blame her? Shen Miao dare not try. Then if Zi Jing Xing knew that she had married before and also became Fu Ziyu Yi's wife and even put in effort for Fu Ziyu Yi's empire. How would he view her? Shen Miao had thought that she would not care about how others would look at her but at this moment she suddenly felt fearful. She did not want Zi Jing Xing to look at her like how he would to an enemy. Her strange expressions were all seen by Zi Jing Xing. Zi Jing Xing's eyes were deepened but he sighed and held her in his embrace. I do not like to force. If you do not want others to know, I will not ask. He said, but don't let me wait for too long. Upon returning to the residence of Prince Ruai of first rank, Zi Jing Xing quickly went out again. He would always have many things and Shen Miao did not ask about it. Currently she was not even clear about the situation in Great Liang. The explanation that Zi Jing Xing gave her about the Lu and Yi families made her understand that Great Liang and Ming Chi was not that different. Even though it looked on the surface that the country was rich and the citizen was at peace, but one feared that there were many undercurrents that were moving under the peace. It seemed that because Great Liang was even bigger, there were more people who had more ambitions. After all, from Emperor Yang Liz and Zi Jing Xing's attitude towards their father, it was very strange. It seemed that there were many origin to this too. Shen Miao thought of Ming Qi when she first met Zi Jing Xing. Zi Jing Xing seemed to be searching for something all around. It was also the same in the general residence and just nice encountered her setting up a fire in the ancestral hall. In the secret chambers of Prince Yu, Zi Jing Xing and Zhao Yang seemed to have gotten something. But what exactly was that thing? Xin Miao had thought that it was a kind of map on military defense but thinking about it. The map of military defense would most likely not be placed in the secret chambers of Prince Yu of first rank. As to what exactly it is, at the moment it was not known. Thinking about it, she thought about another thing. Pei Liang had followed Zi Jing Xing's entourage all the way to Great Liang. The main reason to let him come to Great Liang was to avoid Fu Ziyu Yi's pursuit. She also brought Liu Yu Ying along and settled her down but Pei Lang. Pei Lang looked honest but he had a proud heart and initially it was because of Liu Ying. He then worked for her but after being suspected by Fu Ziyu Yi, he protected her with the cost of his life and made Shen Miao unable to request Pei Lang to do anything for her in the future. At the end, Shen Miao stood up and walked out of the room as she had decided to talk to Pei Lang. Pei Lang's room was arranged at the very last room of the east side of the residence of Prince Ruai. The environment was not bad and the residence of Prince Ruai of first rank was originally very big, so it was not a difficult thing to allocate a courtyard out and Pei Lang was well treated. It was just that one did not know it was done on purpose or deliberate, from where Shen Miao was staying. It was the furthest distance in the entire residence of Prince Ruai. When Shen Miao arrived at Pei Lang's courtyard, Pei Lang was sitting in the middle of the courtyard playing chess. There were two green-clad maids that was standing by his side and they had appearances like the flowers and moon. Both of them kept on drinking tea with Pei Lang and their gaze was on Pei Lang. Even though there was restraint, there were some inexplicable meaning behind. When this scene fell into Shen Miao's eyes, 
She felt it was very weird. Her steps stopped as she looked from afar as she remembered some matters in the past lifetime. In the last lifetime, Pei Liang's talent and learning was unbounded and thus when Fu Ziyu Yi finally ascended to the throne, he promoted him to be the national advisor. Pei Liang was good looking and when he wore the black robes, he had an appearance of being aloof from world affairs and indeed had some air like those immortals. The officials in court knew that he was deeply trusted by Fu Ziyu Yi and would not dare to be his enemy. Pei Liang was considered well known throughout Ming Chi. However he was very young and good looking. Fu Ziyu Yi had schemed and tried to bestow some high ranking official's daughter to be his wife but it was rejected tactfully by Pei Liang. This kind of genius most likely had his own temperament. Fu Ziyu Yi thought that Pei Liang did not like others to arrange for him and thus let him be. When Shen Miao had not yet went to the Ken country as a hostage, she had a good relationship with Pei Liang and had also asked if he had any young lady in his heart. At that time, how did Pei Liang responded? Shen Miao had a dazed expression. Pei Liang said, Your ladyship, this official's aspiration is not in this. The words aspiration is not in this seem to be a way that defeats one's purpose but in fact showed clearly Pei Liang's attitude. Pei Liang was very sound that when helping Fu Ziyu Yi make a decision, he would be able to rule out any possibility of emotions and ensure that the result would not be unexpected. Speaking of it, till Shen Miao died in the last lifetime, Pei Liang had always been single and one had never heard of any young lady that he was interested in. At this moment Pei Liang was standing together with two females but Shen Miao felt somewhat awkward. Even in Guangwentang, Pei Liang had attracted a lot of female students by the virtue of his one style. He was at the right age now which made others think more. As Shen Miao thought about it, the maid who was fanning Pei Liang to chase away the butterflies and flying insects saw Shen Miao. She was first startled before quickly greeted. This servant greets Wang Fu. The other green-clad maid also rushed over to greet. Pei Liang looked up and saw Shen Miao. Shen Miao smiled gently and walked over before telling the two green-clad maids, you all can withdraw. The maids looked at Pei Liang perplexedly. Pei Liang waved his hands and the two maids then withdraw. Shen Miao looked at the elegant and supple back view of both of them and a rare mischievousness appeared in her heart towards Pei Liang. She asked, it is rare to see teacher Pei being this romantic, to have red perfumed sleeves as companion. The two maids looked at Pei Liang's gaze but were somewhat unable to conceal their admiration. Pei Liang shook his head and smiled bitterly but did not rebut. One had to bow one's head when staying under other's roof. These two maids was sent to him by the residents of Prince Ruai and if one had encountered such servants, Pei Liang would have thought of ways to chase them away and not leave them by his side. However this was not Ming Chi, the other parties were not his servants and one did not know if it was Zi Jing Xing's idea, thus no matter how much he disliked it, Pei Liang could only endure. Looking at Shen Miao who did not seem to be affected by it at all, Pei Liang's heart could not help but be slightly sour. Teacher Pei followed me to Great Liang because one had no other choice. Shen Miao said, now it has become a situation where it is not ideal or worse off. What future plans does one have? She paused for a while, in the beginning with Liu Ying's matter, it is me who forced teacher to do such things and teacher had no other ways and now implicated teacher to leave one's hometown. One is really conscience stricken about it and if teacher want to leave, it is possible. Upon hearing those words, Pei Liang looked at Shen Miao somewhat surprised. All the time when Shen Miao faced him, there would be a sense of righteousness and from the beginning when she used Liu Ying to threaten Pei Ling, Pei Liang was faintly aware from Shen Miao's subtle expressions and emotions that it was hostile but it was not on purpose. Pei Liang was also puzzled over the matter and investigated it carefully but at the end came out with nothing. At this moment, when Shen Miao faced him, that hostility had disappeared. It was as if it was put down but the peace and calm made Pei Liang feel somewhat lost. It was as if something special has been placed down by Shen Miao and disappeared like the clouds. Shen Miao looked at Pei Liang but there some regret in her heart. She had always defined Pei Liang as someone that owe a lot to her but that day when Zi Jing Xing said that Pei Liang was locked in Fu Ziyu Yi's underground prison and was tortured so much but did not confess that she was the mastermind. 
many matters and thoughts were different. Shin Miao knew of the means that Fu Ziyu Yi used to punish those who betrayed and under such a circumstances he did not offer her name. Shen Miao could not even say how touched she was. Now thinking about it, the reason why she hated Pei Lang and had many grievances towards Pei Lang was because Pei Lang had always stood on Fu Ziyu Yi's side from the beginning till end. When Fu Ziyu Yi dealt with their Shen family, Pei Lang chose to watch with folded arms. When the crown prince was abolished, he did not say a single word for Fu Ming and when Wan Yu was to be in a marriage alliance. He did not try to stop it. But in this world, some people would help you for due to friendship and some would not help you due to one's duty. The relationship between Pei Lang and her did not reach the level that one must help. As for this lifetime, Pei Lang was no longer Fu Ziyu Yi's people and was even turned into enemies with Fu Ziyu Yi and there was no reasons to seek shelter with him. Thus even if one was not willing with those matter, there was no need to carry on with it. At the end. One could only rely on oneself. Bit pure hate or resentment, there was no advantage at all. Pei Lang suppressed the disappointment in his heart and asked, What are your plans for the future? Shin Miao was startled. Me? Pei Lang's eyes became clear again, as if he had returned to that unparalleled national advisor. He said, the position of the residence of Prince Ruai of first rank is not as indestructible as it seemed to be. One think that in the imperial family of Great Liang, there are the existence of some variables. He looked at Shen Miao, even if the imperial family of Great Liang have nothing to do with me and the residence of Prince Ruai have the ability to protect themselves, your road might not be always smooth. Shen Miao slightly frowned, even it is so. Teacher mention all this. I can give you a hand. Pei Lang said. Shin Miao replied. Why? Even though I am not considered a talent of the world, one can do one's best. Currently Liu Ying and me are relying on you to stand in Great Liang and only when you live well and stable, we can also be better. Even if it is it planning for myself, I have to help you. I want to remain in the residence of Prince Ruai of first rank. He paused. If I could participate in Great Liang's court matters or I could came out with plans on your matters, it would be even better. After being silent for a while, Shen Miao then said, Teacher Pei, you have thought about it? You do not owe me anything so there is no need to place one's life with me. No need to depend on me and with your abilities, you can live well. You do not need to speak of those excuses. You are not one who chase after fame or gains. Pei Lang smiled bitterly in his heart. Shin Miao seemed to know him well, even better than himself. Even he himself did not know about when he had such an inexplicable obsession but he stubbornly did not want to draw a line to the relationship with her. He said, this is my choice. Shin Miao took a deep breath, just as she was about to speak. She saw Jing's walking in from outside and did not know where did she had gotten and beautifully invitation in her hands, Furen, the bright summer banquet's invitation is sent over and it said that true I Wang of first rank is invited. This servant accepted the invitation, may Furen take a look. Xin Miao just arrived to Great Liang and someone came to send an invitation. This was her first time appearing in the gathering of the noble woman in Long Yi and the other party obviously had ulterior motives. She asked, who send that invitation? It was sent from the boudoir of Long Yi general, Lu Furen. Shen Miao paused in her actions. The civil Yi family and the military Lu family. These two aristocratic families of Great Liang seem to have a very delicate relationship with the imperial family. It was indeed that the oncoming person was coming with ill intentions. 